I think provincial punk basically sums up an attitude that has run through my work from the beginning, which is a kind of suspicion, really, of the kind of bohemian credentials of the art world and uh, finding it slightly preposterous, the sort of rebel stance of a lot of the kind of uh, alternative culture scene. Contemporary art is the R&D department of capitalism. We come up with new ideas that, that the rest of culture will kind of um, latch onto and sell. That's our job. Deal with it. <laughs> when I was, what, 16, 17, when punk rock came along, you know, it seemed, uh, yeah, it seemed absolutely thrilling and uh, shocking to me then. And now, I probably, I don't think, I can't even remember the last time I listened to a punk record. You know, unlistenable rubbish. It amused me to make ceramics, you know, because they were seen as very, Parochial, I suppose, you know, a little bit hippie, which as someone who came through punk was anathema. I probably used techniques that no other potter would ever think of using because it would seem too laborious and silly. I wouldn't profess to any originality when it comes to my pots. I mean, I want them to look pot-shaped. I was squatting in London in the early 80s and pretty well everybody else in the house was involved in sort of arty filmmaking in some way or another. And so it was in the ether, and so I was aware of little independent filmmakers. They were taking it much more seriously than I was. So, you know, that was the milieu in which I operated in. It's not about being perfect. It's about a give and take between the maker and the material and the imagery that they're using. So it's sort of like a sort of delightful conversation. It's not like the, the craftsman is imposing their will of perfection on the material and everything, because that can be dead. Often the most interesting thing is, is when you allow the material to fight back. My wife, you know, she's been incredibly influential on my work because she knows so much about the sort of dark arts of psychotherapy and psychiatry and stuff like that. You know, what it is to be human, basically. That's what I'm interested in. I think the art world often has a sort of difficulty with popularity. Pretty much everything's been done. And, and you know, when the technology moves on, then art will colonise the new technology. But I think the real interesting things nowadays are being done by people taking art into unexplored areas of society. I enjoy just making stuff one piece at a time and doing it as well as I can. I think my ambition is not for my work to get worse. <laughs> well, so a lot of artists, you know, somehow don't manage that one, you know. Particularly when they get successful, it all goes a little bit, ah. <laughs> Because I look back at my early work, you know, and it, it's got the same elements in it. I was probably angrier, and I was probably a little, a lot more obsessed about sex when I was, at, you know, in my twenties. But the basic sort of spirit of my work hasn't changed that much, really. You know, I think the group of people I was hanging about with in the early eighties, we kind of were part of the art world and, and maybe a bit bohemian, but we were also laughing at it. It's good to keep that distance, that self-awareness. That's very important, and I hope that. Maybe people reflect that that's what's happening, yeah.